Every day, I am getting one step closer to having another healthy baby, and Caraway Home is helping me do that. Their ceramic, naturally slick surface cookware allows you to cook with minimal butter. Uh, they're very easy to clean, just a little warm water, you wipe it down. And the best part is, is that Caraway products are made without any toxic materials like BFASs, BTFEs, and a bunch of other things like I can't even pronounce. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, right now, visit Caraway wayhome.com slash tsfs to take advantage of this limited time offer for 10 percent off your next purchase this deal is exclusive to my sarah fraser show listeners so visit carawayhome.com slash tsfs or use code tsfs at checkout caraway non-toxic cookware made modern it's time for you to see what all the fuss is about read about their five-star reviews and why so many tsfs fans buy caraway home order now on April 5th, you must be very careful, Margaret. It's the girl. Witness the birth. Bad things will start to happen. Evil things. Of evil. It's all for you, no, don't. The first omen. I believe the girl is to be the mother. Mother of what? Is the most terrifying. 666 is the mark of the devil. Hey! Movie of the year. It's not real. It's not real. Who said that? The first omen. Rated R. Under 17, not a minute without parent. Only in theaters April 5th. Get tickets now. Survivor 46 is here, and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast, and we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Valladares, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. to Jax Taylor's. How did we not take a photo together? Darn it. I thought it. I thought about that this morning. I thought about that this morning. Uh, you guys, all I can say is a teaser is stay tuned because we're going to be teaming up to if you've ever thought about launching a podcast, if you have an existing podcast, you want to grow it. We had podcast movement is in town and we had some incredible meetings yesterday and uh, let's just, we just had a ball and we, we were chit chatting so much. We forgot to even take a photo. So stay tuned. More to come. I thought about that. I was like, Oh my God, no photo. No photo. <sighs> so I rushed home from that. I was so exhausted. We had boneless chicken wings. Um, they were lovely. And good. nachos. And we devoured our chicken nachos and our french fries. We stuffed our faces. And we were meeting after meeting after chat. And then... For everyone that thinks I don't eat, you saw it firsthand, girl. <laughs> yeah, but you still look good. You... Ugh. The Ozempic still looks like it's it is kind of working for you because you look it's great. It's working again. It's working again. We had a little resurgence on the but Ozempic. I, I don't think you should get any skinnier. The way you looked last night, you look <sighs> you look healthy. You looked normal. Like you ate normal. You look great. You know, I mean, you didn't look. I don't know skeleton like no because you there were times where you were like oh your face was like sunken in. Mm -mm. Honey, you Fine. You look great. I'll keep living my life. Um, but I did see you in person. You funny. know, then I got a haircut. You know, my haircutter cuts both Gage and Jeff Lewis's hair. I don't go to I go to Gino, who's like the number one under Chaz Dean, but he doesn't cut their hair at the same time. And he was heading out um from the he's like, You're my last customer today in studio. I'm like, where are you going? He's like, I'm going to cut your friend Jeff Lewis's hair. So Jeff doesn't even, go Jeff is the... such a D, but he can't even go in. He has the <laughs> hair cutter content. And by the way, Gino Jeff. spills no secret. So before Jeff, now this gets out and then Jeff calls Gino and is like, why are you fucking talking to this kid about me? He spills, Gino spills no secrets. He just knows what I do for a living. And he's like, I'm going to see Jeff. I'm like, oh, and I'm sure I'm his favorite person these days. Um, ah, well, God. you should send your regards to Jeff and you need to be always on the Jeff Lewis radio, uh, Sirius XM channel. 
I'm available. When uh, is, you know who also when is needs Yonta to be on Jeff cameo? Lewis? When? Who? Who? Uh, James, because he is picking out Allie's clothes at the beginning of this episode of Vanderpump Rules. Vanderpump Rules. Is that cute or creepy? <laughs> Season 11, episode 9. Here's our full review. I loved it. I have never liked... Okay, Brock and Alley Cat are my two favorites. Hands down. Last night's episode, I was back on board. So juicy. This what week, a good episode. This week, I say this franchise <sighs> survives. And in fact, my husband and I are so addicted to watching this show. We rewind so we can get every tidbit of detail. It was so good. Alley Cat is my favorite. I don't like to shop either. And this sounds oh very um, Jeff Lewis. But I actually hire a personal shopper because I do not want to shop. And Excuse me, diva. I don't pick Diva out Diva Alert. Diva Alert. I would say four times a year. Only I only shop for clothes four times a year. Braxton is my personal shopper. We meet up. We shop for four hours at like discount place. Zara, Nordy's, Bloomy's Sales. Oh, all these things. We probably buy, I don't even, $1,000, $2,000 in clothes. That is, and then he comes to my house. He puts together all the outfits, jewelry, shoes, everything. Takes a photo. And then so I can just scroll through and look at my outfits because I hate to shop. I am with Alley Cat. I thought that was great. Is it a little creepy? Now, it's weird. A You're little... like a dude. You're like a dude. I, a dude. I have I'm a shopping a addiction. Really? And I put together my, oh, oh I wow. could shop and often do. Shop every day and just... It's an addiction, they, they they call it. But you're like a dude. I'm a dude. Um, it's actually embarrassing. I need to buy new handbags. I buy so few honey. handbags. I I know you're at Louis Vuitton. I'll t- even if I were making honey. Miss Yontif's salary, I don't even think I would go to Louis Vuitton that much. Like I, you I, I don't even like to go that much. I don't recommend it. Just stay away, everybody. Um, I it's am a, a slippery dude. slope. It's um, a so it's a little creepy it's a little about weird. James, but Alley Cat loves it. I agree with you. This was a great episode. Love Alley Cat. And uh, we'll get into it in a few minutes. This Brock, I, you know, don't count out uh, the, the, the the tall, gentle giant types. This Brock is a shade star. Brock he's is a shade hot. star. Eh, not really, but he's a shade star. I love him. I love him. Ugh. Um. Okay, where do you want to begin with this episode? We... We start out this episode. Um, again, I, I'm not. I'm thinking. I'm thinking they're not making these edits look very good for our girl Ariana. But uh, no. we find out pretty quickly in the episode that Schwatzy has had his attorneys drop a letter offering Sandoval. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Sandoval has given Ariana an offer to pay her current market value for her half of the house. He says the entire amount. Now, I need to know what that means because it's like that's a very vague term. I mean, you're not offering to buy her out of the whole amount of the house. Yeah. I don't understand. Like if they bought it together, why don't you just, I mean, I I, I know I'm lost in the weeds again, guys, but why don't you just owe half? Like if it was three million, like if it was two million, and you each owed bought one million in, you would have to now assess it for fair market value. So, like, say it's worth three million, then wouldn't you need to give her one point five and not the full amount? If you paid half, I don't know. I mean, I'm just like I. Great question. I just think it's it's when he says entire amount. I'm not sure that that's accurately edited because like what is the entire amount to me means like entire, I don't know. But yes, he does want her out of the house. And I agree with Lala's statements that like, this is weird at this point. You're that miserable. Take the money and run. I get, I said this weeks ago in business. You just sometimes lose a few dollars. You don't lose a gazillion dollars, but at this point, you could have already invested the money. Now, we do know she just bought a new house. I get it. But you could have done that a lot long ago. And I'm not even so – this does not mean we sold the old house, people. She just bought a new house. So, yeah, sorry you're going to take 200000 less. I mean, I've done business dealings where I've taken a little less just to get out of a situation and move on with life. It's called being an adult. 
Well, I think she has a whole different version that played out in the press. Didn't she come out and I think she explained more about what that offer was and it was actually far below market value, I think. She Any- has. I- anyhow, we learned that, right? And then the show is finally, finally, we're moving on from Sandoval and Ariana and Raquel when Lala and Schwartzy go to Creations and have acai bowls and, uh, you know, whatever, ginger shots. And he confesses that he made out with Sheena when he was, like, dating Katie one time in Vegas. And this is shocking news to Lala Ken. And that kicks off shocking a great news. episode. Kicks off a great episode. Uh, before that, we do see Ariana trying to poach Anne, but really Anne's offering herself up for the job. Um which is lovely. And um, Schwartzy, she does reveal that she would break Schwartzy's dick if she uh, were to go there with him. You know, they joke about this is a date and she's like, I'd break your dick. And he does, you know, admit that. And I mean, last week on Patreon, I compared Schwartz to Joe Benigno, the Sages. Do you know my friend, the Sage? Yeah. Mods, the Sage. Um, I compared Schwartzy to Joe Benigno on the Patreon saying that, uh, we have two small dicks, and I asked the audience who has a smaller dick between Joe Benigno, the Sarge's husband, and Schwartz. What'd they say? Uh, it, it's a tough call, believe it or not. The, a lot of people said Schwartz, and a lot of people said Benigno. Wait, you know? and, what, what, yeah. Are you meaning an at literal size, or are you meaning that they both seem just as like women just wear the pants in every relationship they have? All of the above. Two small dicks women wearing the pants i mean it in every way imaginable the small dick that's what's he has got it's got to be small girl um you know but sometimes the women tell me that uh size doesn't matter i don't know that's what i hear a whole nother story <laughs> excuse me uh yeah it doesn't size like okay there's just two extremes right there is there is micro penises and i haven't been with a yes. micro i've had a guy that had really a micro. never <laughs> What do I look like a small dick chick? <laughs> well, no, I mean, really like, you. well, I your taken... numbers, well, you're sorry, excuse me. You're, I see you put the sunglasses on for everyone watching on YouTube. She puts those on because I guess it's a race conversation. Um, <sighs> people are still going to know it's you, dear. Um, what was I going to say? No, I mean, I think my numbers are probably, you know, hundreds times what yours are so just the process of elimination <laughs> if you've been around the world and then some you see a few micros but go on okay somehow so you've been i with some digress micros. i mean do you mind a micro i mean i've been with some small penises and i've been with some very large ones and you know the large ones are great at first and then it's like it's a lot of schween i mean it's a lot and i once was with this guy who was so fucking hot like gorgeous and he had a micro and it's like you know what god giveth and god taketh away <laughs> fyi just fyi <laughs> this is what happens guys when i'm exhausted um so god giveth and god take it away do you do you believe this this kiss between uh schwartzy and sheena yeah don't you, you? i mean i don't know you know this show better than i do but i say <sighs> yeah yes i don't know i don't know how could this you know, I don't know. I'm not sure. How could this not have come out? I mean, that's the thing. How could this not have come out all these years? As you said, when we started season 11, how could this have not come out? They were there since day one. Because they all drink and use so many drugs that, I mean, aren't it, it, aren't some things hazy? Aren't some things like hazy? And here's the thing. Do I think this was a passionate, intentional makeout the way that Tom Schwartz described it? No. Do I think that this was like Sheena said, oh, he pulled me over to the corner and he kind of kissed me and I rejected or, what you know, kind of rejected his advances because I was there for whatever cheerleading competition for my sister. I think that was probably more it. So it was never classified as a kiss, really. But- I think when the producers were sitting them all down going, all right, so what else have we got? And Tom Schwartz probably said, well, there's one time, you know, Sheena and I almost kissed and they were like, perfect. We'll take that. It's going to be a passionate makeout. We'll go from there. That's what I think. 
Listen, Lala, she's been at this long mm-hmm. enough. She knows what she's doing. I love how she's just like, what? Like, she's, you know, they all know how to produce the show from within. So I love how she was like, oh, no, this is actually something. And I do believe that Schwartz is that clueless that he's like, oh, wait, this is becoming a storyline right before my very eyes. Oh, wait, hold on. Hats out of the bag, Schwartzy. I call him the Nozempic Ben on Ozempic doctor. I'm talking about Dr. Applin and his wife who founded My Optimal Body. I am so happy about this. These are the first mindful eating based doctors I have ever partnered with. They see patients nationwide and they are seeing more patients who have been on Ozempic and Ozempic has failed for them. What makes My Optimal Body so unique and why am I endorsing them? It's because Dr. Applin actually looks at food additives, your, your addiction to food, your mental health. They do a whole look at you, including your gut health. Many of Dr. Applin's patients are working out, restricting their diets, and still gaining weight. Why is that? Because something's going on in your body and with your mind. Visit MyOptimalBody.com to request an appointment. Be sure to tell them the Sarah Fraser Show sent you so you can qualify for a free personalized assessment, plus a bonus free 30-day supply of their gut repair product when you sign up for a customized plan. Again, that's MyOptimalBody.com to request an appointment. First, the bad news. SAP Business AI won't help you generate Cubist versions of your family's holiday photos. But it will help you understand which supplier is best to help you roll out your plant-based packaging in Southeast Asia. Or identify the training your junior project manager needs to rise up the ranks. And automate repetitive tasks while you focus on big innovations. So you can be ready for the next opportunity. Revolutionary technology. Real-world results. That's SAP Business AI. This episode is brought to you by Paramount Plus. Ewan McGregor stars as Count Alexander Rostov in A Gentleman in Moscow, the new limited series based on the best selling novel. Stream it on March 29th with the Paramount Plus with Showtime plan. Visit ParamountPlus.com to try it free. He kissed her. Okay, well, listen, for the sake of this argument in this episode, I will go with the fact that it's real. I'm not so sure. Could be made up. I think it's probably made up but apparently they kissed and uh lala is listen andy cone said all oh, you stay tuned he's like lala is the voice of reason this season i mean she is the voice of reason on this episode she's just like what what so then yes so that happens um what else we have this party where the you know have you ever been to ziggy no I- i've I never been by- there i passed I pass by Ziggy all the time. It's here, like in my backyard in Hollywood. We won't reveal where you live. You don't like that. Um, but it's close to where I live, darling. So we'll, we'll go to the Zigster. All right. We'll take some to- pictures for the kids. Um, so James gets a job. He's DJing. Did you see James got with the big dogs a few weeks, two weeks ago? He was with Paulie D opening up. And Mr. Kennedy posted, I'm with a legend. Listen, James does okay each night. Paulie does 10 times better. You know what I'm saying? But uh, our boy was out with Paulie D. He got a gig. But here he was at the Ziggy Hotel and uh, spinning the tunes. The tunes. What'd you think about his, what'd you think about his uh, DJ skills over there? Um, You know, I think I'd have to see him in person to see how it really flows. But, I mean, it looked fine. Everybody was having a good time. Uh, you know, I never like a girl group of bullies. And uh, I'm a fan of Joe. Mm-hmm. Even though I get messages, Joe is a weirdo. People people slide into my DMs to tell me I'm on an island and I'm the only person that likes Joe. I think Joe is weird. She has ADD. I think you can tell that. But she came to this DJ party. Now, I will say too, uh, James did not seem thrilled to see Schwartz. Schwartz went over and was like, hey man, leans in. And Kennedy's sort of like, hey, you know, how are you? So maybe things still a little tense between them. Allie is out there on the dance floor. I mean, she's trying to get the crowds going. What a great girlfriend. And then very we, pretty, very pretty girl. Beautiful. And then we see. And by the way, you do not approach the DJ booth and oh. interrupt oh. Mr. Kennedy at work, Sarah. Pardon you me. Should know that. Okay, well, whatever. Um, I never care. I go and I, I go up to these celebrities all the time. As you know, I was very triggered because I saw Ken. <sighs> On uh, last night's episode, and you know, of course, Ken at BravoCon would not take a photo with me. Um, so oh, I've been out with you. You go up to them all, girl. 
<laughs> chasing who is it lavar burton out of craigs or something for the, i'm like who the fuck is she chasing her? then then we sit down next to someone she's like this is someone famous i'm like it's not Turns he was, out it was he's somebody hbo hacks he's oh, the, he's God. the guy in hbo hacks anyhow oh, i don't know that's such person. a great show go on uh no, I thought that was a scene that I hope we get some resolution because Joe ends up leaving crying. And I thought Sheena was a yes. bitch. I thought they were a bitch to her. They were they Sheena was saying, Don't wear a hat. You don't know where to you don't need to wear the Tom Tom hat. You're like doing too much. And their hatred for Joe is that Joe and Schwartzy apparently went to a big bear weekend with Raquel and Tom Sandoval. And so Joe was aware. Now, I I can understand the women not liking that. You know, that's not very good girl code. But was Joe ever really any of their friends or was she always Schwartz's friends? Because, I don't know, that would be like you having an affair and my husband and I going because we've known you and been friends with you for a long time and you're with your other guy. What am I going to do? Go, oh, I'm sorry, sir, your friend group. I want to be loyal to your friend group, so I'm going to leave. I mean, she's not their friends, right? Or am I missing something? You are missing nothing. Um, look, I don't particularly like her. By the way, a lot of people slip into my DMs and say, I'm with Sarah. Joe's not, Joe, Joe's oh, really? cool. <laughs> so they're always looking for a fight on the opposite side. Um, she's, no, look, I don't like to see anyone cry. I really don't. So it, it, that bothered me. The poor thing cried, you know? And I think it was legitimate. I don't think she yeah. was acting for the cameras. So she's slowly growing on me. She just doesn't, fit into this show that's all i know she's a little bit she is she is quirky i think she fits in great not as a main friend but as a i love that in the confessional she wears no makeup she just sits cross like i think it's so refreshing because they all look the same now you know they all have the slicked back hair they all have the long pointy nails the makeup is all done they all look the same it's refreshing to see joe and Allie look different act different not really care what they look like like great let's represent that Allie seems too. pretty similar to the rest of them to me well Allie seems like she's too nice yet to uh you know get in there and uh make have any objections Lala's a strong personality welcoming. Katie Malone is a strong oh. personality I mean that's are you gonna strong. jump right in and have objections we have someone else who has a strong personality this season. Miss Maddox. Oh, she ain't playing this season, girl. And I'm with Lala. It's starting to get bitter. Now, I have flip-flopped throughout this season. She left in tears. Okay, talk to me. I have flip-flopped. I have understood Ariana's point of view much more. I have. With Tom yeah. and Tom's narcissism. And I have more empathy for Ariana Maddox. Last night, I did not. Tom brought a new girlfriend there. Ariana made it a point to tell her, um, oh, why are you with this 41-year-old narcissist? Move on with your, like, don't waste your time with him. Don't, like, what are you so, bi- I always, I I don't know. I just think that's such a Rolling red flag. Rolling her eyes. <sighs> Rolling her eyes, telling this woman how shitty Tom is. Yes. What about um, when Tom came over? I could. I mean, did you stop breathing? I stopped breathing. Tom and Ariana speak for the first time. Big moments. I could not. Now, obviously, a producer said, Tom, you're going to go speak to Ariana. I assume a producer said, Ariana, I'm sorry. He's coming. He's coming in. He's coming in. You want that? They want that extra thousand? Guys, wire her an extra two thousand. She's poo pooing. Yeah, she signed a contract. What are we going to do? Get in a lawsuit? Put the twenty five hundred in the bank now, Katie. You shut up. You're getting nothing. And then he comes in, but that was like she didn't even look. Wow. What would you think about them? Him speaking to her, honey. Um, I thought that was a huge scene. I did. Um. I thought that was a big scene. I too stopped for a second. And um I stopped. Yeah. I mean, right? It was it was the first kind of time we've seen them 
have any sort of communication together, which we knew was going to happen. And I think we see more scenes that are coming up. So, yeah, I mean, overall for me, that wasn't the most significant thing. I guess I was kind of enamored the whole show with at least other storylines that were happening. That's how I, I, I don't know. It wasn't as significant for me, I guess. But you... It, I, I don't know. I stopped breathing. I stopped breathing in my tracks. I could not believe it when he spoke to her. Honestly, I, I really couldn't. Um, she did say that to the other one. And I thought the other scene, this is the scene where I thought it was like, wow, next season is really going to be Katie and Ariana versus everyone. When Tom Schwartz came over and he and Katie was like, yeah, you kissed her. And then Ariana starts chiming in. And I also love how Lisa and Ken are there. And Lisa's like, Shane, not. And Ken is like, no, not shiny, you know. <laughs> There's my British accent for today. Ken's like, shame, really? <laughs> and she's like, no, we would have known this. Oh, and we're having the sandwiches. Oh, we'll, we'll get into something about her in a few minutes, honey. But yeah, I, th I thought that was funny. But and, and then Ariana's like, it. yeah, what's wrong? Oh, excuse. Like Ariana was just like in his face where she's like oh is this an excuse i hear oh and he's just like i'm sick of the two of you it's gonna be ariana and and, and katie versus everybody next season everybody lala's gonna be in with with uh, sandoval sheena will come around get ready for a new season and think? everyone's gonna hate them i just think everyone is gonna hate them yeah, I think they need to it, – it gets it's getting a little tiring about Schwartz. And, of course, it gets more tiring because then we end up seeing that, that Katie spent the night with Tom's best friend and bar manager. And so she's completely and caught off guard. Behind, behind the Velvet Rope podcast guest, Max Aboyans. When was Max on? That, well, back in the day, Max was on that season where Stassi got fired and Kristen got fired. Max and Brett, uh, the other newbie, got fired for uh, racially a racially insensitive past. And I had on, I actually, here's a fun fact. I was, he would always chat on Instagram, me and his mother. Which I understand a mother who is just worried for a child that is being canceled by the world. I mean, we're over that now. Um, you never stay canceled forever, guys. Just remember that. Keep your heads up when life tries to cancel you. Now you but, might as well uh, just post you know, the next day. You never canceled. Yeah, now you get canceled for an hour. It used, you know to, be, it used to be you took a break and you reflected oh, and then that. you came out with an apology. Don't bother. Forget. Just post. If if you did something wrong, just own it that day and then post the next and move. Keep it. Just keep it absolutely moving because people will still keep be huge fans. As we see, look at Jax Taylor. Look at Stassi. I mean, huge, huge podcasts and opportunities and Kristen Doty back on television. Keep it moving and grooving. Matt Lauer in the Hamptons. Red carpets rolled out when he walks into a place. Moving and grooving. Yeah, we're horrible people. They did bad things. Blah, blah, blah. Crucify me and Sarah tomorrow. I just don't have the energy now. Um, Max Boyens broke his silence on the Behind the Velvet Road podcast. Talked all about uh, the racially insensitive past. And uh, we held his feet to the fire as much as we could. And then we we moved on. So go listen to that. Wait, what was Max? Like, Did he have like insensitive tweets or something? Did it was it like social media posts that came out and he was making racist jokes or something? What was the? Yes. Now, I don't know the exact because, I mean, I don't remember what I did three hours ago. OK, I don't remember. But yes, there were racially insensitive tweets. And I mean, I remember around what they said, but I really don't remember exactly what they said. And it wasn't, it was against, I believe, the Asian community, the Black community, maybe the, the gay community, but definitely Black and Asian communities. And uh, yeah, we had him on the podcast. So there you go, everybody. Go listen to our chat with Max Boyens. Um, the mother and I, his mother, we talk all the time on Instagram. She was a mother worried about her son. I can understand that. Sure. Well, um, hopefully Max has changed. And, uh, you know, some people try to, they think they're funny and they're not. Or maybe he really believes it. I don't know. Regardless. He's a, he's a horny little fucker. Yeah. He's a horny little fucker, right? Guess so.
he uh, gave it to Katie and she took it and she loved it. And he loved it. She's horny. He's horny. They did it. I mean, I don't know what else you want me to say. This show is so <laughs> incestuous. It's so incestuous. <laughs> Katie and Schwartz, can, they are completely uh, just sexual napalm for each other. I mean, they will not leave one another alone. It is so weird. I think that was so bizarre of Katie. I cannot even imagine. And Max, where's your loyalty to your bro? Best friend, apparently. Even if they're friends just hanging out. Dude, leave the house. Why are you spending the night there? Wild. And listen, I love how they keep saying Boyan's. Like, they're bringing his last name into it. And I love how it's like they're listening and they're listening. And like, I see Andy's point. Lala's like, what? Like, okay, yeah, that that is your best friend. You're doing it with his wife, Katie. Look, Tom Sandoval has a point. What is the double standard here with Katie Maloney? Then even Lala, she's like, Katie, I don't understand. So Lala is just seeing the light and she is just like, I, what is going on here? What, what am I, I mean, I don't know why you're shocked, Lala. Like, have you met Jax and Tom and Kristen and Stassi and the whole group? I mean, she's just like, this is classic Vanderpump. This Sarah, this episode that you like so much, this is what you missed. Seasons one through eight. No, one through seven. This is the show times, imagine times 10. Imagine Jax sleeping with Kristen while Kristen is dating Sandoval and then Kristen lies about it and then she finally admits it and gets slapped in the face by Stasi. And Lisa is just shocked. So this is what you missed. This is classic Vanderpump 101. It was great. I loved it. She slept with Max. Max Boyens. His best friend. Listen, back in the day, Max, during COVID, when he was being canceled, he really was friends with them. He would always go over Schwartz's, Sandy's. He was the manager at uh, Tom Tom. I believe he actually, I think I know, remember, I forgot to tell you, he lost his real job too. Think. Well, they make him sound like in the episode that he still has a job. I or were they talking in past tense? I thought they said past tense. Oh, baby. he past was tense. the manager. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, I'm sure he's working somewhere, and um, that was great. And I love that the tables are turning. I love that we're moving on from Sandoval and Raquel, and we are speaking less and less about Raquel. Brock in the yeah. mix. I I thought it was great, but I, I do want to go back up, back up because sure. Well, we see something about her, and I'm going to say I Ooh. think we are setting up. I think LVP is dropping some strategic lines. We are going to be ready for the bombshell uh, reveal next year that it is never opening. That something about her was a flop and never opened. Because Lisa Vanderpump is so interestingly saying, isn't it weird, darling? It's been a year. They've sunk so much money into it, and yet they haven't been able to open. They'd be making a fortune on these sandwiches if they could just open. And I thought, well, Lisa, you're the queen of West Hollywood. Lisa and Ken, I'm sure, know California. They know Los Angeles. They know all the players to make to get your permits passed. So, and I know that they're not a part of it. They're not business partners of something about her. But don't you think it's strange? I mean, we have another sandwich tasting that happens and the interior looks beautiful. The same thing. Same sandwiches, according to Lala and Lisa Vanderpump. Well, Ken is like the same thing and Lisa's like, darling, this is a year later. It's not the same. Well, actually, Lisa Vanderpump, it's the fucking exact same except for one piece of bread. Ariana's like, and don't worry, the, the bread's going to be toasted every day. <laughs> like, that's uh, Lisa's like, and listen, I will go back. You know where it is. It's between Chaconis and the Abbey, two of my favorite places. That is fucking, pro- forget about Jax's and Prime, Studio City, Prime. the other shit, and Schwartz and Sandy's and, and the strip mall. That's not cheap either, but this is, I don't care how small it is, between Chaconis and the Abbey on that street. It's right near Sutton's store. That is so fucking expensive. This isn't like I bought an apartment and I'm closing on it in two years and I'm not paying. You're paying every month while it sits there. It's like, that's crazy. Now, apparently, 
there was a podcast, I don't know what podcast, but apparently something about her, Ariana Katie's business, the partner who was creating the menu, I guess that woman in the show, she went on a podcast. I don't know which one, but she trademarked something about her. So the sandwich shop is closed before it even opens. It's done. Not opening. Not happening. The lady stole their idea. Well, not really, because Katie and Ariana didn't trademark their company name, which they should have. They got screwed over. So guess what? If this opens, there is no something about her. Let's call it Ariana's <gasps> revenge. I don't know. That's what this this woman, I guess, said on the podcast. Or no, wait, did who is this podcast. woman? Is this woman the one that we see making the sandwiches? I or- assume... You think I'm going to go listen to a podcast? Um, I listen to this podcast, your podcast, Shannon Doherty's podcast, and that's about it. I appreciate everyone listening to this podcast. Really? I'm such a wonderful, so pleasant, I'm such a wonderful, happy, pleasant person here. God, am I getting as bitter in life as fucking Katie? I listen to yours, Bill Mars, Joe Rogan's, Juicy Scoop. Who else? Oh God, that that crazy lunatic! Am I getting um as bitter in life as fucking Katie? You're... Please tell me if I'm a troll. A little like bit, a little bit. Oh yeah. God, I apologize. Because some guys. of these Let's other podcasters happy. have great. Um, some of them have good scoops. Some of them have good interviews. I mean, you know, I know what you're saying. I think the problem is lots of times with podcasting is they kiss ass. They kiss ass. Milk toast. <sighs> Do you have any milk toast for breakfast? Some of them are bad. Um, but anyway, okay, so we think it's the woman we see making so, the sandwiches yeah. that is stolen the name. Wow. That would explain the delay. Because now I I don't think it is opening. I think you're right. And we've seen – we've you know, you and I ought to go by and do an updated check. The deck was taken away. That was apparently a violation. Um, it was so cute. And – now somebody, I think the last time you and I even went, they had paper up in the in the walls, which usually indicates they've probably taken down all this, you know, interior, which leads you to believe it was staged for the show, perhaps. But something about her is a cute name. I don't know. I'd cut the woman in if I were her. I'd be like, look, chick, you one upped us, but we love the name. But I get your to your point, there is no way at this point in her career that Ariana Maddox is going to be there slinging sandwiches they're just no but could and she, i could mean Katie... with sheena buying a house and lala buy we have sheena buying a house lala bought a new house i mean maloney is an og so i guess we gotta get for, i mean i don't know what the fuck schwartz is doing but katie is doing well for herself too i mean she's not doing ariana money but she's doing okay too i mean for get it it's over you're not opening the fucking thing just admit it just admit it you lost the business and you're not opening it and i agree with you we have paparazzi it's a very heavily paparazzi neighborhood right near craig's and uh we boarded up the windows to avoid everyone seeing that uh it was staged and we took the whole fucking thing down Look, I mean, I agree with LVP, and LVP certainly knows this. I do think it would have made quite a bit of money because they have huge supporters. You and I would have gone in, and when you and I went, it's right next to a fabulous AA meeting or an NA meeting. You would have gotten all that traction. I believe it's AA. The AAers would love a sandwich. I mean, it's right near the Louis Vuitton store in West Hollywood, darling. And you could do Tom Tom. You could do Sir. You could do something about Chaconis, my favorite. Chaconis. I mean, I don't know. Do you think we could be wrong and that it is is opening? Okay, well, there you go. I said, Melissa Gogacita, Messy G, my girl, Messy G. Um, I said that she was going to hundred percent be fired and they didn't fire her. She's coming back and she's back. And now we get to watch Teresa Melissa not speak for a whole season. That sounds like a lot of fun and like an interesting TV show to watch. So, uh, can we be wrong? Uh, Sarah, I'm often wrong, but, uh, people like me anyway. I don't know why they just find something to like about me. I guess I don't understand it. Well, I mean, um, it is strange. It is yeah. getting to the point that it's strange that it hasn't opened. And you know, we this is this is prime time to be rolling out something about her merch, and nothing, nothing is happening. Uh, and I think, uh, yeah, that's a they made like 
250, they said on the merch each. So that's where people get mad that they look, it's still an iconic piece of merch. They they sold merch after oh, some, all. They sold something about her merch. Yeah. So people have got they got up in arms like you're selling fake merch. Mind you, it's not fake. It's still iconic. And you know me. Oh, by the way, Jax just announced the other day, Jax's Studio City merch has been restocked. Just for everyone that's great curious and watching the valley. Um oh. We got to talk about the Valley for two minutes, one minute before we go. Um, I do talk about it on Patreon this entire, this weekend. I give a full recap about how we have a new breakout reality TV star and her name is Kristen Doty. I'm being sarcastic. She's been there from the very beginning, but I talk really all good. about the Valley on Patreon this weekend. Um, So I, I don't think we're going to see it. Can Sarah and David be wrong? I don't know about you. I'm wrong all the time. The people still listen. Um. What did you think well, of this? You're right a lot of the time. Thank you, darling. I haven't watched The Valley, but it is getting a ton of buzz. I almost wonder if we should. People have certainly reached out and said, are you two going to cover it? I know you're covering it on your Patreon. Patreon. I had to find a place for it. Um, I'm also doing New Jersey on Patreon this week. I got something mm. to say. I'm buying Beverly. Go on. I mean, I'm pretty I, caught I up know. in Sister Wives coverage. And Listen, there's, I'll give you, there's a, I'll save it for the Patreon. There's a lot of good news and there's a lot of bad news associated with the Valley. And we can't have that discussion here today, but there's good news and bad news. Um, what did you think of Vanderpump? Anything? Oh. How, how do you think how this ends? Because this Max thing is going on and that Brock, oh, and Sheena was like, I'm staying out of this. Oh, and I mean, you got the highlight of the whole episode that Sheena has like 56 people on. Location. Oh, that was good. That was really good. That was great. That was super creepy. Um, but like, I don't understand. You have to share your location with her to get on that list, right? Well, she must be awfully good, I guess, at convincing people that they should share their locale because she's got wow. 50 something on. That was funny. I bet. Do you know anyone that does that? I don't even, I don't even think I have my husband's. Uh, I sometimes, you know what I, you know what I hate even more than that. I fucking hate it. And sometimes you'll look down and you're like, oh, it's on. I hate these red receipts. Now I like when I could tell if someone else read it, but don't you don't don't you think you're gonna find out if I read your shit? Because I read it and then I don't respond. You we can, all do that. You can turn that off now on your Instagram, which is really lovely. Have you no, done that? Oh, you could. Yep. Yeah. Yep, there's oh, a setting. Golly. No, I was talking about on text. Oh, well, now you can do it on IG messages. So Dolly. when you all get done listening to this, just <laughs> Google how to turn off read receipts on IG messages. Because you know how, same thing, for uh, Instagram yeah, for I a hate long it. time, you can read, like if someone's read your message and, and they unfortunately yeah. can read. Because somebody that does listen to our podcast um, – tries to always threaten me and says, I know where you live. I know where you live. Oh, and uh, um, really? I heard it on Behind the Velvet Rope slash Sarah Fraser show. Yeah, they try trying to, to start problems. Right. And yeah. I, I I, don't read it. So I know who this person is. So, um, but you, you, now you can turn them off. Just, just Google how to do it. And now they cannot you tell yeah. if you have read their message. They have no idea. They do not get, once you shut off the setting, you got to do a couple things. You got to go into settings. You got to go into, uh, anyway, Google the steps, but they have Google no it. idea whether you've read it or not anymore. I'm going to Google it. Two final things before we go. Go to the police on this person. Bring it in. Claim harassment. Get a protective order. And also file, file a harassment charge. That's what I would. We'll talk afterwards. I would go do that. Okay that and second of all john mayer uh has just come out he's apparently denied uh any past threesome with miss shay he's actually annoyed and wants nothing to do with miss shay i'm sure andy is so thrilled with this i'm sure he is so thrilled to this because andy let me tell you something will be team john mayer in the did you have a threesome with miss shay Miss Shea will lose her job. Um, there you go. I guess overall, uh, a better episode than we expected, oh, right? So good. So good. And I love it so much. I'm now back on board. And we got a ton of I'm tea. Back on board. We have a ton of tea to get to. FYI. Oh, our show tomorrow is going to be so good. Um, Sarah, it's always a pleasure with you and with these wonderful humans. 
I really do enjoy my job. I'm not as bitter as Katie. I, I got something left to me, guys. I'll talk to you soon, Sarah. Love you, gorgeous. See ya. Bye.